You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo podcast with your hosts, Andrew Chang and Justin Goddard. Hello and welcome to the Wandering Buffalo podcast. My name is Andrew Chang and alongside me is my co-host, Justin Goddard. Tonight, we're going to talk about the six degrees of the Buffalo Bills. But first, you can find us on social media and podcasting platforms and even on YouTube by searching The Wandering Buffalo Podcast. I'm excited for this creative episode. So let's break down the agenda. But first, and always, Justin, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. I'm good. I finally got home to relax a little bit. Doing this with you guys. Got a Kolsch going. We're good. How are you doing tonight, my friend? I'm I'm doing pretty good. I got your favorite kind of beer here the sour ale i and for those of you who don't know justin just loves just sour ales love a sour <laughs> i'm being quite facetious justin hates sour you ales you got there a sour pina colada i i do i you know what i just looked at it and i was like you know i'm just gonna try it yeah well you love it so uh, well yeah i do it's it's not bad i, I i'd stay away from stoneyard brewing company's key lime pie one that one let me down hard it, it was not good <laughs> well let's uh let's get readjusted here i'll break down the episode we have some bills related news to talk about not too much it's been a quiet week so we'll kind of cruise through that one then after that we got we are going to dive into our wandering buffalo interview with our guest louis Trano. after that we're going to dive into the six degrees of the buffalo bills and we're going to wrap it up at the end and preview into next week's episode. So let's talk about some Bills-related news. Probably the most important is that the Bills have until May 3rd to pick up the fifth-year option on Treme Edmonds. That's a $12.7 million swing, Justin. Do you th- personally think the Bills should pick it up? Um, so... Personally, I'm sitting here with the with the armchair the armchair goggles on. Um, I don't know if I would pick it up yet. I'd kind of like to see another sample size year from him. Um, there's there's no rush to do it right now, and with what they just gave Milano, uh, with the Josh Allen contract coming up, I would probably personally wait it out. Um, but you're also talking about a guy going into his fourth year. Was he going to be 22? Um, it seems like the the coaching staff really loves him. They made moves to bring him in the building, um, so I'm not going to be surprised if they pick it up. Um, mm-hmm. But I, if I personally, if it was my decision, I would kind of like dangle the carrot and be like, "Hey, man, we love what you're doing here. No rush to get this done. Like, show it to us this year, and we're going to give it to you." But he's also been voted to two Pro Bowls. Mm-hmm. So I think it's likely that they pick it up. I just personally would wait on it a little bit. Yeah, I was going to mention that the peers and the coaching around the NFL, the coaching staff, think highly of Tremaine Edmonds. So I personally think that they might pick up the fifth-year option. My biggest fear is that Tremaine Edmonds doesn't get the fifth-year option when we let him go after next year and he turns into this absolute beast on another team. That's my biggest fear, and I don't want us as Bills fans to have the fear of missing out or go like, oh, my God, I knew it. We shouldn't have let him go. Now oh, look shucks. at him. I know. I could easily see that happening. So, And I just like Tremaine Edmonds, so I, I, I think that he has such a high ceiling, and he's not even close. Of reaching that ceiling, so I yeah. got faith in him. And and with that said, I don't think Tremaine Edmonds is where we draw the line. Um, but with the drafting and developing and wanting to retain your own players, we're mm-hmm. going to come to a point at which, being talked about it with this off season with the limited cap, we're going to come to a place where we have to make tough decisions because mm-hmm. you can't give everybody that top of the market contract. Even though the Bills seem like they get a little bit ahead of it and, you know, save a few million here and there. I mean, you're talking mm-hmm. Trey extended, Micah Hyatt extended, uh, Poyer extended, Milano extended, Allen's up for an extension. You're going to have to talk about digs. There's only so much money to go around, and, and I don't want 
to watch Edmonds walk because of you know a few dollars here and there um, but there's going to be tough decisions at some point I just don't know where it's going to come yeah that's a good point I didn't even I didn't even think about that and that 12.7 million dollars that's that's guaranteed fully guaranteed if I'm not mistaken right Justin yep the fifth year option is fully guaranteed now yeah, for, uh, a... for first round picks yep yeah, and you know when you look at Josh Allen's contract, that's a no-brainer. We're gonna pick that up. That's a discounted r- rate for someone like him. And but, you're talking forty, for, yeah. forty after this year. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll see what the Bills do, but hopefully, uh, Come hopefully on, it's the new best TV decision. deal money. Yeah. Right. All right, and then we're gonna move on to Trey Adams. Sorry, Trey, buddy. Trey, Trey Adams. He retired, everyone. He must have listened to our episode last week and found out that we might have tossed a little subtle shade towards him in regards to his poor athletic testing. And I just want to open off by saying, in no way are we saying that he's not a good athlete. We're just saying in terms of the combine results, he was towards the bottom end. And it's unfortunate because... This is this used to be a guy that was highly regarded as a first round tackle and injuries plagued him so much so that people were thinking of Trey Adams and were thinking to themselves like can this guy even play and that eventually led him to become an undrafted free agent and now we retired so it, I if I had to guess it's for health reasons it's such a shame because the guy had such a bright future at one point, and now he's elected to retire. So I, I don't know. I don't really know how you feel about it, Justin. But for me personally, it's. It, I just. I feel for the guy, and it's. It feels like a lost opportunity for him. Yeah, and um, I'll be the first to say that I actually kind of respect his decision. Um, I mean, he's only 24 years old. A lot of people would keep trying to you know put it together for the next few years and you know cash a check somewhere um but these guys they have their whole lives after the nfl say he made it to the league 30 years old whatever Mm -hmm. and these injuries keep happening you know if he retires at 30 he's got to live with his body for the rest of his life um so yeah he he is somebody that i was very interested in when we brought him in um kind of had that low risk high reward situation Mm -hmm. um where if you could unlock what what he could do um he could be a difference maker um unfortunately he's kind of battled the injuries and it's it's kind of a a much much lower scale andrew luck situation where they just kind of get to the point in their career where it's like is this worth it and you know always going through rehab never being healthy never feeling right you know, I, I go two, three days with a cold, and I'm like, why are we even doing this? Mm-hmm. So, like, to have the knees hurt, the back hurt, whatever it is at that point, you know, if it's not worth it to somebody, I, I respect the retirement. Yeah, absolutely. These these players are putting their livelihood and health for our entertainment. So I think we all need to be a little conscientious of that when people make these tough decisions because to be in the nfl well you gotta like football right so for you to give up your dream essentially or say like all right this part of my life is behind me it's a it's a big decision it's not like you know just like all right you know i'm gonna take the stairs instead of the escalator today kind of decision it's it 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 means something so uh, I, you know, for Trey Adams, I hope it was the right decision, and I really hope that the rest of his life is great. So, I think that's going to wrap it up for this news week update. So now we're going to go straight into our interview with this week's guest, Luke Trey. Special guest, classmate of the 2011 RH class. The real wolf of Wall Street, my old friend, Louis Trano. How are you doing, buddy? Great. Thanks for having me, guys. Really appreciate that. What an Absolutely. intro. 
Yeah. So why don't you tell the uh, listeners a little bit about yourself? Who are you? Like, where you're from? All the in a quick synopsis of your fandomonian. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Um. First things first. Very very diehard Bills fan. I grew up in Rochester, so you know it's hardly over an hour away. Um. Like you said, we went to Rush Henrietta together. So so very. Uh, the Bills are very near and dear to me. I'm uh, I'm 27 now, which means. Uh, a lot of those fan years were, were more bad than good, um, but I work in finance accounting, uh, and I did my undergrad all in the upstate area. I went to Syracuse, um, and from there got bounced to New York City, where I was until the pandemic. Um, but yeah, and I, the, I see so a quick story on my fandom. I'll just really quickly. Uh, I grew up with the Bills, as a lot of people I think is the case. Uh, it was a big family thing. So for me, it was my grandfather. And he passed uh, RIP when I was about 17. And literally for probably since I was six, it was like a good 11 years we didn't miss it together. Uh, and the, the only fun story I'll say there is that uh, as I got a little older, a little wiser, I noticed some Sundays he was a better fan than others. And it usually, as I got older, uh, depended on if he had money on the game. So that was, uh, but no, it was very wholesome. It was very wholesome. Uh, and yeah, the Bills for life off of that. Um, that's my little Bills fandom. Right. Well, you know, I think I speak for Justin and I when I say, first off, our condolences to your grandfather. I Thanks. was unaware of that, so that makes me a bad friend. So I no, it, was, it was a while ago now. It was all good. All good. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Risky, man, gambling on the Bills. Maybe maybe he just had a feeling that the Bills would lose, so we bet against <laughs> an opposing team. I don't know if that really makes him a fan, but, you know, maybe he's a smart better. Or he was a smart better. I think he's like me. He just bleeds it, and it's uh, maybe a little too optimistic for his own guys some weeks. But, uh. Right, right. That's why I don't bet the Bills. <laughs> I don't bet at all, but that, that's for a smart man. man. <laughs> the smartest of the three of right. us. Then. So, um, I, you know, I'm just going to regale the tale real quick of, like, the sip and move story. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you remember this. So, when... We, we were playing like front yard football in Andrew Bacone's yard. And I remember somebody dumped off a screen pass to you and I was able to get by some people. And I had Justin, I had Louie dead to rights, like right in front of me. I went for a tackle. This man hit the B or circle button, depending <laughs> on what system you're playing with and spun me, uh... like, diced me up. And I remember just hitting the ground and I just looked back and he was just like, 10 yards up the field <laughs> you got to break down in that stance you got to get yeah. square i you know you know there's a reason that we're here talking about it and not uh not out there <laughs> it's <laughs> true but uh, i i'll say i vaguely remember it i was always the shifty little uh i was just saying the other day i wish west welker happened like six or seven years earlier maybe i would have had a a career yeah something that i do I, I just didn't think it was for me but uh here we are it's okay yeah, Lou. Uh, Lou was definitely the shifty person for sure. On I think I'm a. I think if Cole Beasley next year, if he has another leg injury, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit him up. So I, can, like, so I could be like a dead Cole Beasley with two broken legs. <laughs> <laughs> then I might be like ten percent. <laughs> so and I appreciate you guessing my highlight, my one highlight. Thanks, thanks for that, dude. No problem. It. Would, <laughs> I don't think I ever got that that bad on a football field like. I, I'm pretty sure I felt like walking home after that, but I didn't. <laughs> um, Taking my ball and I'm going home. Right. Um, so I know from personal experience, and you just alluded to it before, that after high school you migrated and you went to Syracuse and New York City. What What was fan like for you in both those cities? Well, you know um... – Syracuse actually is quite the New York City pipeline, um, somewhat by design. Even Syracuse basketball markets itself is the New York college team. So you see a lot of New York City folk pulling for Syracuse. And with that, it kind of goes both ways, unfortunately, where a lot of the SU students are Long Island and New Jersey folk. And so actually, I did, you know, uh, Pat, Andrew, I met my pocket of Bills fans. Typically, the Bills fans had upstate roots. But we were actually, I would say, outnumbered by that New York City pipeline that I talked about. It was a lot of Jets, a lot of Giants, um, a lot of Tri-Staters. Um, so it was not always – I was fighting the good fight. I was fighting the good fight up at Q's, trying to do my part. Um, but in New York City, uh, luckily, you know, McFadden's was holding it down for, for a good while there. Um, with this episode, we might have to post a picture of Shooter, Andrew. You Shooter and uh, one Bills fan, Shooter McGavin. Uh, mm. 
pre-pandemic, we ran into him at the, uh, the at the good old McFadden's, the Bills Bar in New York City. And um, yeah, we're I mean, we're everywhere. So we might be in pockets. We might be drowned out by jets and, and other trash, but we're everywhere and we're, we're loud. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Do you, I, I'm trying to remember the day that we ran into Shooter. Was that the day of the Falcons game? It damn well could be. In fact, it probably was. It was a win because the vibes were good, and it was 2018. Uh, no, it was the last high rod year. So, sorry, it was the Jacksonville playoff run. Um, it was oh, that year. Yeah. It probably was that. It probably was the Atlanta game. I'll have to. I'll timestamp that photo because I should have the original. Uh, I I got I it for sure. Play. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think uh, that was an upset for us too. Uh, we were not supposed to be a playoff team that year for sure. So that was a uh, very hot McFadden that that Sunday. I uh, the year we were tanking. <laughs> yeah i remember uh after we took that photo and it was the first time i ever wore that throwback starter jacket mm. and when we won the game oh, yeah. we kissed it and you're like never take it off <laughs> <laughs> that's a fire do you still have that it was a great very fire jacket it's right behind me oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Put it on. Uh, maybe in a little bit <laughs> speaking of new york city uh let's transition to some more harder times the hardest day for me living in New York City was when we went to that Thursday night game and saw the Bills lay an absolute egg against the Jets. 2017, I remember I couldn't even finish watching the fourth quarter. I just Josh McCown know. for the Jets. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, could you believe it? It was you, We did, some of us did not make it to the end of the game. I remember it all too well. Yeah. So that being said, that was my hardest day living in New York City as a fan. What was your hardest day living as a fan? I had, so I didn't want to get too, I've talked about, uh, it, it, none of us will be mistaken for bandwagon fans. And with that, I'm not trying to get too lost in recency bias. So one of my answers is, is a little more recent okay. and it was kind of an indirect, I uh, it's not, it's a cop out answer. So it's not my only point, but, um, tough day for a Bills fan, in my opinion, the 28 to three Tom Brady. I mean, if we're not in the Super Bowl, we had some uh, some skin in the game rooting against that guy for a long time, and I was smiling ear to ear at halftime when he was down twenty eight to three, and I just remembered over at the end of the game saying that I was an ocean of salt, and I, uh, that that was a tough one. I couldn't believe that dude did that, and it all felt like it happened in slow motion, um, and it went to overtime, and they got that win, and uh, that was either five or god six i don't know but i that was a dark one just because i think us bills fans we spend a decent amount of time explaining why tom brady is not the greatest um and it always hurts a little bit when he when he stakes that claim um but i will say outside of that if we're going to talk about actual bills games um the big there's I, trying to go a little further back and flex a little bit of my i've been here for a while there was a game in 2009 a lot of Bills fans know this. Mm-hmm. We lost a barn burner of a game, six to three against the Cleveland Browns. And I actually, for this podcast, I decided to grab a couple of stats from that game. There were less than 300 yards passing. Ooh. For a game that only had nine points scored, there was only four turnovers, two fumbles, two interceptions. Okay. You might wonder what they were doing. There were 16 punts for over 700 yards in that game. And just so you know, going into that, at the end of the game, both teams, we went in one and three and the Browns went in zero and four. So at the end of the game, we were two, one and four teams that just punted the ball a bunch. So that was a really dark one. Um, I think if we ever got back to being that good after we're actually good now, mm-hmm. it might be hard for me to, Oh man. I, I don't know. That was a tough one. Um, You'd still be there. <laughs> I'd still be there, but it would be with a whole context of hope that's been lost. I don't know, but yeah, that was a rough one. You'd be um, saying this is our year an awful lot. <laughs> and then lastly, I mean, the Texans won um, the playoff game. So, you know, when we lost to the Jags in the playoffs, um, I think a lot of people were happy to get there and end the drought. But that Texans game, it just, oh, man. I mean, Deshaun Watson escaping two sacks um, to get that to get that game winner. I, I, I don't remember. It, it was all a little drunk and blur. But, oh, my God, there were five different ways that we had him dead to rights. Um, there was a bad call on, on, I believe, Cody Ford on what was called a block back. Obviously, Josh Allen had that crazy fumble play. Um, so the, the first playoff game that I really felt like we could win and losing it, that's a pretty bad Bills beat, um, and that was that Houston game. So those are my three answers. One is Tom Brady going 28-3 and three coming back. Mm-hmm. Two is just a, a, a – a, I don't know what you call a 6-3 to three 
football event in 2009, and then uh, and then the playoff losses are. Wrong. Yeah, right. I'd I'd say a hard one for me. I don't know if you guys remember this one. The the Stevie Johnson oh, end zone gosh. drop against Pittsburgh was that the same game we oh. lost to Pittsburgh's backups? Like all a different we had... team was there. Okay. It, I, I'll tell you, I was actually there, and I'll tell you my section. Um, we legitimately saw up in the three hundreds and over the angle angle and it looked we were all celebrating for five to six minutes until we lined up for third down and we're all very confused where we are we legitimately did not know that that ball popped out and then i did not know until i drove home to rochester that stevie johnson blamed god yeah. uh, the press conference which is also a famous uh bills well, book. Game so yes, we, well, I got them do that. we took a little turn towards negative town so i want to follow up give me some of your give me the best or like your top two top three give me some good memories we can get out of the negatives I mean, the best has got to be, I think we'd all probably, I mean, I get goosebumps thinking about 2017 and I specifically for me. Okay. So I got the two screen action going on on one hand, we have to take care of the business against the dolphins um, in order to make the playoffs. So that's exactly, of course, that's from going with it when we added the drought. Mm-hmm. And I think most bills fans, we were spiritually in that locker room. Everyone saw the clip going around. And when uh, Andy Dalton throws that pass and, you know, uh, was it Boyd? I think Boyd on the Bengals goes ahead with a. Let's just say the the Ravens, as everyone remembers, they got the ball with less than a minute left, and uh, eventually I think Flacco or G- Flacco threw a fourth down incompletion, and that game went final. And all of a sudden, on the screen, were the playoff matchups, and there was no in the hunt, no nothing. It was set in stone. Bills Jags in the playoff draw was over, and I uh, that was a New Year's Eve, and I was crying like a baby uh, in my in my New York City apartment all by myself. Um, oh my God, that was, I still get goosebumps though. 17 year playoff drought. And I think we all felt it. We all carried it with us. Um, and God, you can't undersell how big that was as a Bills fan. I mean, that's, and the the clips in the locker room show it that. Yeah. I'll tell, I'll tell you one of, one of my favorite moments was, uh, and I think I've said it on the podcast before. I was, I was not a fan of the Josh Allen pick when we made it. Mm. I, I mm. wanted another quarterback named Josh. I was very wrong on that. <laughs> I was right there with you. Yeah, I was mad no about faith. that one. But uh, so I went to the first preseason game that season. Carolina, right? Yeah, uh, I believe so. I don't remember the team. All I remember is Josh Allen came into the game just standing ovation. And I was like, I was sitting there. I was like, watch this first pass. They're just going to. They're just going to show how far this guy can throw the ball. I don't even care what happens. It's going to be awesome. And sure enough, first snap, he drops back, and he just uncorks this bomb. I think it was to Robert Foster. Yep, I I remember the play. And I just remember I'm watching Robert Foster. He's streaking down the sidelines. He's open. I was like, this dude's first pass is going to be like an (laughs) 85-yard touchdown that traveled 70 yards in the air. You know, the ball landed like six yards out of bounds and like 10 yards past Robert Foster. But just like the energy in the crowd that was just like that feeling that like, yeah. you know, we might actually have a guy. It was It was unbelievable. I remember it all really quick. I'll just slide in in that game. He finally, I think it was late because uh, I think they put him in the second half. He threw, he ends up throwing his first touchdown in the fourth quarter and this is just, I'm so romantic about Josh Allen. I encourage anybody to go look at that because it is a ball to the back corner of the end zone that is thrown late and there's not even really a gap. And that was the time he really just squeezed one in there. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, that's uh, if you're waiting for the season, there's probably an all Josh Allen ever touchdown montage. And that would be the first highlight. Um, there is. I can confirm that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say um, in that vein, one of my other – my other highs that I was actually reflecting on the, the season we just had. And I think maybe, maybe you guys will agree with this. I think any season that falls short, um, obviously you're not completely satisfied as a fan, but for the first time I reflected and had my head held high. And in, in, in terms of moments, um, I mean, that Taron Johnson pick six, we didn't know it at the time that that would kind of be, when I look back at that play, that was like a celebration of the season in like, I don't know. That was just a really good moment that we got to rewatch the highlight for the next week leading up to the AFC championship game. And I thought it was just a really good moment. Um, yeah, you know, you can't win a Super Bowl every year. Only one team does it 13 and three, the way we were doing it all year. And then uh, a home playoff win. I mean, come on. Yeah. For me, that was kind of like my standard for how good this team 
could be was like AFC Championship game. I don't know if we're there yet to like go to the Super Bowl, win the Super Bowl. But when we lost that championship game, the like it stung like hell for a lot less time than I thought it would. Because you know I could look back at the season and be like, man, three years ago, like where we were to where we are now, it's just an unbelievable feeling. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Well, that Jets game was you know, about four years ago. And since then, you've already said it, you moved back home. Maybe it was because of the pandemic. Do you ever plan on moving back to the New York City area after things start clearing up and opening? Or do you have something else in mind? It's a great question. Um, I So since the pandemic, you've uh, run into, I've actually met my, my now longtime girlfriend, which has been a blessing. And uh, she does have a bit of a visa situation that kind of keeps us tied in Rochester. Mm-hmm. Uh Frankly, it's a little little bit of an advantage for me because uh, my my job, I'm remote and I pretty much have an excuse to ask to stick around. And frankly, with the bills the way they are now, I kind of want to be here. I want to do the season ticket thing next year. Um, it's crazy that none of us were able to see Diggs in person. And he has – Diggs himself hasn't even had to have that Bills Mafia experience. So I definitely uh, – at least for another year, I want to I wanna stick around. I want to see – I want to see what we got in store. And uh, John Fisher training camps. Yeah, I know. I mean, God, it's right in my backyard. We'll s- It'll be interesting to see if they uh, keep doing that because they went, uh, they held it in Buffalo last year with the pandemic going on. And um, being a Bills fan from Rochester, St. John Fisher camps is always a really awesome thing. So I'm really hoping that McDermott takes them back uh, campus here. I know they have amazing facilities on site in Buffalo, so I get it. Um, but I'll tell you, Rochester Bills fans love it. It's, it's an awesome way to see the team get autographs. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to stay local for the, for the near future. I've never been a big plan guy, but, um, I'm, I mean, I'm a level of Bills fans where it's like, do I really want to be away for these next eight to 10 years? Gosh, I don't really want to be away from it. I want to be right here. That's so, true. That's my plan. All right. So regardless of where you end up, uh, how do you think that's going to affect your life as a Bills fan, you know, being able to go to games and just kind of your life in general as a Bills fan? Yeah, well, you know, I will say the Bills Mafia thing, one, I'm really glad that the franchise is leaning into it. It's a real thing. Um, so it's really cool to see them doing actual Bills merch that says Bills Mafia, and it, it is family. And I feel like anywhere I go, um, we can find that Bills pub. And even if you're not surrounded with your folk, I mean, you don't see a lot of people that are upset at Bills fans right now. Everybody loves the table jumping through. Everybody loves the Bills Mafia. So it's a lot of love. It's a lot of fun um, anywhere that I am. And that's that's awesome. I mean, it's it's kind of fun. The further you go away from Buffalo, when you see that logo, it means a little bit more. And, uh, mm. you know, that's a blessing. That's bigger than football. That's just such a fun part. Like, I, I would, wouldn't want to be a fan of any other team. I'm not trying to be too long-winded. But um, okay. this team, they follow me, and I follow them. Well said, well said, and I I love what you said about that logo meaning more as the days carry on, and I feel like the reason why we can say that is because of the success that Brandon Bean and just the Bills organization has been able to put together. So that being said, are you happy with what the Bills were able to do in this year's free agency? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely curious your guys' take, but um, from from the reading and, you know, being a fan, you, you, you read the beat writers and you, you read all the takes. Uh, the, the common perception was it was going to be really hard to keep Milano along with uh, Feliciano inside and then uh, what Daryl Williams at, at tackle. Uh, a good young tackle like Williams is going to be an expensive guy. And obviously you're trying to get better on top of that. So they actually managing to keep all three of them. We're going to go into next season. Um Cody Ford's coming off injury, but theoretically we have five linemen that were on the roster last year. Mm-hmm. We saw in the Super Bowl, we saw in the AFC Championship game, you know, the one thing that stood out to me, I thought a struggling Mahomes in the Super Bowl looked not unsimilar from a struggling Josh Allen. And what I mean by that, it came down to being under pressure, running for their lives. The one thing, the guy on the other side, the not goat, the fake goat, the false guy, the Brady guy, he has a beat play and he does the thing where he eats the ball, goes to the turf. And that is not in Josh Allen's DNA as currently constructed. Oh, yeah. And I don't think it's in Mahomes' DNA either. And it leads to the electricity that we love them for. But I just think that we saw that with Mahomes, it can look just as bad if he's not protected. So again, my point is I'm really happy that we have the offensive line back together. 
bonus points that we're keeping Milano. There's some really good like on off numbers for him. Um, I can't be mad at that. And the, the other thing, uh, kind of looking forward to the draft. If you listen to Bean in his press conferences, he's not shy about the fact that he wants to go into the draft with as much flexibility as possible to truly take the best player on the board. And I think when you look at this roster, of course we could be better at pass rushing. I mean, every team could be better at that, but in terms of glaring holes, if we don't fill this, we're not going to have a center linebacker. I mean, we've been in that spot before and we're not, we're so far from that spot that I can't be, you have to, it's, I mean, you have to trust the process. You, It's a joke almost, but you really have to trust the process with these guys because what have they done except break the streak in year one, get more wins every year. I mean, I'm a big, the one number that I like, so Josh Allen, his rookie year, he went six and 10. It was a year that was by design, a step back, the rookie quarterback. I mean, Nate Peterman was our number one and we had about 60 million a dead, dead cap. You take that year off of McDermott's, those six wins, less those 10 losses, and the dude's 32 and 16. I'm with that. So I'm I'm all in on whatever these guys got to do. Um, yeah. Right, right. Well, you know, speaking of the draft, I know Justin is always itching because he's our big draft guy. So, Justin, why don't you ask him your question real quick? Yeah, I, I think the draft came – to be a real love of mine from how many years we were terrible and just <laughs> putting all my hopes on the draft. Um, but it stuck with me. So I'm just curious if you have any thoughts on where you'd like to go at 30. If there's a position, any player you're really in love with. What are your thoughts? Let me, I'll give kind of uh, my two thoughts and then I'm going to stay away from players because I'm not a scout and I'm not this and I'm not that. So I'm not going to act like a, I'm big X's and O's. I know the exact player to plug in guy, but I'll say this. I think what Bean's going to do slash what I hope he does. Um, he's mentioned in the past uh, slash his track. He has a track. What I'm trying to say is a track record of trading up. Well, they say a lot of smart GMs trade down, but Bean's the guy who he sees the guy that he likes. And the example that I'm going to use, um, probably the biggest draft of our lifetimes is the draft where he took Josh Allen, Tremaine Edmonds. And I read a lot of Bean quotes leading up to and after the draft because we all knew that he was going to try to get our franchise quarterback. And we had all this draft capital that we from trades we made to prepare ourselves to do that and yada, yada. Leading up to that draft, Bean mentioned that they went through all these different mock scenarios. They never had a scenario where they imagined landing both Allen and Edmonds. And when he spoke about that, he mentioned that Edmonds, as the draft went on, was just kind of sticking out on their board in terms of a value guy that was still there after 10, still there after 12, still there after 15. And I think we got him at 17. Mm-hmm. I kind of think Bean is going to swing for an impact player. Um, and, and what I put into that is the fact that if we keep doing things the way we're doing them, we're not going to be picking at the bottom of the first round. We're going to be, we're going to be picking late in the first round. Um, so I think these opportunities aren't lost on Bean. Um, and I think if there's a value guy and I think it would be somewhere on the defensive line, Mm-hmm. I could see us making a package and moving up 10 to 15 spots and trying to make a splash that way. Um, you got a name? Well, so these mock drafts, I'm not seeing edge rushers go until 15 or 20. So I think, I think Wake Forest has a guy. Um, I, Frank, I, I'm sorry. I don't, I, I'm on the spot. I really don't have the names, but um, I was looking at the top guys and I could see us, I could see us getting into that 15 to 20 range and, and trying to bolster. Right. Give give Jerry some help, you know. Who knows what happened? Then a good, but get another body, get another athletic. Sure, I get what you're saying. It. Yeah, you 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 admire the Bills being able to make pretty much, my opinion, an immediate return on investment with their pick. That's that's the best way I could describe it. Yeah, and you know, it's it can be. I, I'm 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 curious if we're gonna fall victims to this because you see it go the wrong way a lot and Belichick all, all he's done is trade down every year and have more bites of the pie but last year you saw it we we, we effectively what Bean will tell the fan base is we drafted Stefan Diggs in the first round and I mean talk about an impact so I, I agree I, I could see them getting up a little more in the later stages of the draft if they feel like they could really take this roster over the edge and let's be honest there's not a lot of room to go 13 and 3 in an AFC championship game we're talking about yeah we're talking about you know Getting over that edge, um, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if we if we spend more assets on one player with the, the collecting a lot of assets. Right. That's my prediction. I'm gonna stay away from names. I'll let Bean do that. Hey, you, you're good, man. So this is probably the most important question that we always ask on our interviews. Real quick, chicken wing, drum, flat, blue cheese, ranch, 
best best place in Rochester go? Oh man, you know what's really sad is that they just, the Duffs was a casualty of the pandemic. We had a Duffs in uh, in Rochester, and that was always my my top my top wing. Um, so I, I'm gonna actually go with uh, dude. You can't go wrong at some of our. If you're talking about Tully's, I mean, their tenders are on point, and they did the wings aren't half bad either. Um, right. I love those local sports bars in Rochester, but I mean, Duff's, I say do the pilgrimage. It's worth the drive the hour, go to Duff's. I'm a flats guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I typically love a little extra crispy, but just, you know, buffalo sauce. But if you want to go barbecue at Duff's, I'm not mad at you either. And blue cheese, we get the fuck out. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> all I say about that. Right. So do you have any questions for us, Louie? I'm, I mean, I, I would just flip a lot of that. I'm curious, Justin, as the draft guy, if, you, if there's a name that I should be looking out for that you like or a position or, or your thoughts on it, I'm definitely curious. Uh, I have so many names and thoughts. Um, my my dream scenario at 30 right now is uh, Jeremiah Wusukoromoa. Um, he's a linebacker, mm-hmm. but he's really that um, big nickel that we've kind of been searching for. Um, that's my dream guy. You're gonna have to tune back in to hear the rest of them. We're gonna I like do that. Is the is, is, he, is he gonna be able episode. to stand in front of Travis Kelsey? We'll see. I don't <laughs> think could. anyone can. <laughs> well, they do say he's. They do say he's the tight end eraser type of player. So we'll okay. see. Okay. But Louis, it's been great having you on. You're a great guest, and Justin, I'll, I'll let you speak for yourself after this. But I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day, and I'm happy that you're in Rochester. Because I just drove back up to Rochester, let's see, on Friday. So I'm here. You're here. We got to go get some wings, do something. But from me to you, thanks for coming on. Justin? Hey man, I had a great time. We, I'd love to talk to you some more, and uh, we'll do it off air, pick your brain a little bit. But yeah, we'll talk seriously. soon. My pleasure, guys. I'm really excited to hear what you guys are pumping out, man. They keep, keep doing it. Really appreciate it. Hey, thanks, man. man. Thanks. All right. So – if you'd like to join our show, you can email us at the Wandering Buffalo Podcast at gmail.com or give us a DM on our social media accounts by searching The Wandering Buffalo Podcast. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. We're going to pick things right off by talking about the six degrees of the Buffalo Bills. If you don't know what the Six Degrees game is, it kind of starts with Kevin Bacon, an American actor. So the Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, or Bacon's Law, is a parlor-style game where players challenge each other to arbitrarily choose an actor or subject and then connect them slowly backwards within six turns to Kevin Bacon. We're basically going to do that with... The Buffalo Bills. So we have our executive producer here, Jake, and he's sharing his screen. We're going to go to Google. We're going to hit the I'm feeling lucky button, and we're going to take that. So, Jake, spin up the Google and see what our first results are. All right, so he shared his screen. I'm terrible at this game with Kevin Bacon. I think I'm going to be worse with it with the Bills, but let's try it out. Why not? Why not? All right, so the first one is comedy movies. Okay, specifically, it looks like the first one is Bad... Oh, The Stand-In with Drew Barrymore. Okay, Drew Barrymore. Let's see. All I think of when I see Drew Barrymore is Never Been Kissed. Never Been Kissed? What, what's that about? Uh, this is a whole long story, but going back to my days of doing crew, uh, I, I was left on land one day while everybody else was in the boats, and I could watch like previous races on a, v, on a VCR, or they had Never Been Kissed, and it's just a terrible rom-com with, with Drew Barrymore, and I watched that movie like 18 times in a weekend. And it's just awful. God, where were you on that weekend? Uh, Marietta, Ohio. Ohio. Okay, so I, yep. I, I think we, uh, I think we just found our first connection. Oh, hey, it just happened. Yeah. So you brought us to Ohio, and I'm gonna bring us back here. So I went to the Ohio 
versus Cle or the Ohio versus Bills game, the Cleveland Browns versus the Buffalo Bills game of the 2020 season, or I'm sorry, the 2019 season where Stephen Hoshka missed that field goal. So that brings us back to the Buffalo Bills in a score of two. We did it in two with a personal touch. Yeah, I I've two never personal touches. I've never seen that movie before, so I mean, no, don't bother. It sounds like something I don't want to do. <laughs> no, it's not great. All right, Jake, spin that wheel again. I'm feeling puzzled. We ask a question. An 11-foot bird lives less than two miles from the coordinates 30, 8, 30.89, comma, negative 102. What's his name? What? Okay, who do the Bills play this year with a uh, bird as their logo? Yeah, so... Do we play the Eagles this year? Yeah, so no. no, no, but we, you know, who we did play them in the past. I think that was that uh, 2019 where we truly got destroyed. But you know who oh, we? That was so bad. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was not a great game. But you know who we did play that year, and I was also in attendance for this game, the Washington Football Team. Do you know who we play this year in Week 17 or the last game of the season? Uh, the Washington football team. The Washington football team. So we went from coordinates to the Eagles <laughs> to the Washington football team to the Buffalo Bills. I feel like you took a little jump there, but I'll allow it. Hey, well, we, we got to take it. I mean, I, I don't know what these coordinates. An 11-foot bird. Come on. Like, yeah, I, I mean, that's... I'm thinking about what, Sesame Street. Was that like a condor? <laughs> I don't like birds. Oh, my God. Pisano Pete. I guess that's the coordinates. <laughs> All right, Jake. I have no idea what that is. Spin the wheel. Justin, spin I'll the take wheel. you the lead. I'll let you take the lead on this one. Oh, I don't. Okay. Roll the dice. And you got... Oh, this is going to be easy. Give me a number. Gave you the number four. Number four? Okay. So we're going to change it up here. Favorite Bills players wearing number four. Bring it back that way. Bring it back that way. I t <laughs> I'm trying to think of whoever wore number four. I don't know. Uh, oh, my God. I, I'm, like, drawing yeah. a huge blank. I know if you put two Nate Petermans together, you get four. But <laughs> do you really want two Nate Petermans on your team? <laughs> Jake, roll the Jake, roll the dice one more time for us. I don't know. That's pretty funny, Buffalo though. Bills, I like number that. Four. Number four, again. Get out of here, Number four. one. Oh. Well, Number I got one. I got a bit of a stretch here, but I can make it work. So Do it. this is a blue die with a white number one in there. And all I can imagine is Cam Newton doing a Superman celebration with that. And I remember when Josh Allen first came in the league and he was – all he was doing was really running because he couldn't throw it to anyone. And everyone was saying, like, this is basically Cam Newton's clone. Because Josh Allen had all those uh, rushing accolades, but not he wasn't doing super well in passing. So I just I'm connecting this back to the Bills because early on in Josh Allen's career, they just it just seemed like when you talked about Josh Allen, you always compared him to Cam Newton and the Bills, the today's Bills to the Carolina Panthers. So that's how I'm assimilating this all together. I just hope he doesn't go the way of Cam Newton. <laughs> Cam Newton was super talented and just beat his body up. Yeah, I mean... Jake, is it possible to roll the dice one more time? Go ahead. We keep getting numbers that aren't Bills players. Come I, on, two. I know number two. I already know a player with number two. Was that your Steve Christie pick? No, that's Tyler Bass. Okay. Right? He's in, he's number two, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> he can be your favorite player at number two. All right, one more time. Why not? What is this, zero through ten? Number six. Oh, God. Ooh. You know, this whole game would be a lot different after the uh, rule change with the jerseys. Oh, we got we got a ten out now. Oh, 16? 
16. Oh yeah, 16. We could we could do that. A total of 16, 6 and 10. Hmm. 16. Give me 14 so I can say Joe Webb instead of Stefan Diggs. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll go ahead and say it's 14. All right, let's spin the wheel one more time by going to I'm feeling lucky. I'm feeling funny. All right. So we got coming to America. Coming to America. So I am pretty sure this is coming to America, obviously well-known movie with Eddie Murphy. And I what what country did he come from in that movie? Like what do you guys recall where he came from? Mm. I was Honest answer here, I've never seen Coming to America. What? Yeah. I mean, but you don't know where he came from. Okay, so. well, I'm pretty sure it's like a, he's... <laughs> he's Basically, Eddie Murphy comes from, like, this really wealthy family. And he comes to America and finds, like, the love of his life, yada, yada. Very good, very good, fu uh, funny movie. You should definitely watch it. But all I know is it might be an African country... So I'm going to bring F.A. Obada into this conversation because F.A. Obada, I believe he's, where is he from, Justin? Uh, I believe he's from Nigeria? originally Nigeria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I, that's where I'm going to put my ties in. F. A., uh, uh, coming to America, <laughs> you know, uh, Eddie Murphy's, you know, the prince of some country in Africa. F.A. Obadas from Nigeria got human traffic to uh, London, that area, and then came... I believe it was the Netherlands. The Netherlands. And then he ended up in London. Yeah, and then to London, came up through like Child Protective Services and Social Services and whatnot. And then he came to America and played for the Carolina Panthers. Hey. And now he's a part of the Buffalo Bills. Let's we go. didn't really count how many steps we took there, but uh, it it all came back to the Buffalo Bills. It was less than six. All right, we we take those. All right, Justin, here's yours. I just can't wait till that guy has ten sacks for us. Right, right. Look, looks like we got a little bit of lag here, so let's spin it wheel one more time. The Mona Lisa. Oh, I got artistic. Whew. This is going to be a stretch for me. All right, so I'm, I'm just going to say some thoughts and see where you go with it, okay. Andrew. Uh, well, I was already wrong. I was going to say the Mona Lisa was Van Gogh, but it's Leonardo da Vinci. Mm -hmm. uh, roll with me here. I, I think he had the drawings for, like, the, the first aircraft but it didn't actually fly i don't know if that's right or not by the wright brothers huh i think well i think da vinci had some drawings yeah Let's let me see. let me see if i can uh let Ooh, me see if i can bring this I, back for us i got it oh go ahead he did the sistine chapel right leonardo da vinci or is that michelangelo i think that was michelangelo God. all right go ahead <laughs> art's not my strong suit Hey, I, I like where your head's at. So, I was going to say Bean painting the Sistine Chapel of this roster. <laughs> okay, so when I think of Mona Lisa, and I don't I don't know if you've ever watched this TV show as a kid, but I think of Courage the Cowardly Dog in the episode where Courage is going through the museum and the light, the moon is hitting a crystal just the right way and the museum comes alive and Mona Lisa jumps out of the portrait and she's she ends up like hanging out with the David statue <laughs> you know the like the thinker and whatnot so this is this is where I'm I'm doing a bit of a stretch the courage the cowardly dog was always on Cartoon Network on channel 58 and i'm gonna let you swing from here oh 58 aj epinesa nope he's 57 who's 58 hmm i 
don't think we have a 58 right now. Maybe we do. Jake, can we pull up in a separate window Bill's depth chart numbers? Um, I Jersey don't think numbers? we have a 58 on the roster right now. Who wears the number 58 for the Buffalo Bills? We're making our producer work overtime today. Let's see. 58 is Matt Milano. Jesus Christ. I'm How so, do we not know that? I'm so sucked into the 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 game here that I'm missing <laughs> the obvious things. Whoa, 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 whoa. F.A. Obada's got double zeros for his letters? That's Let's pretty go. cool. That's pretty cool. I'm telling you, that dude's going to get 10 sacks this year. Hey. He wants All right, it. Let's, I think we've got time for one more spin here, so let's let's do it. I would like okay. to rewind and edit out the part where we missed I am out feeling, on Matt Milano there. <laughs> I am feeling generous. Let's see here. So they're giving us base. They're basically asking us for money, Justin. That's what Google is asking us in increments of fifteen, twenty-five, or fifty dollars. And I can bring this back to the bills real quick. Fifteen dollars for a beer, twenty-five dollars for a hat, and fifty dollars is like the price of. Both those items with tip at the Bill Stadium. What do they call the Bill Stadium now? It's I mean forever. It's the Ralph to me, but we're I, gonna what, go with the Ralph. It's like Blue Cross Blue Shield. High whatnot. energy, high, high mark stadium. High mark. Yeah, yeah. It's too Something, much. Yeah, you know. Speaking of that, I don't really like the name of that. It it's just doing too much. Hey, right? It, it's a sponsorship deal. We're all gonna I call know. it the Ralph anyway, so nothing <sighs> matters. Yeah, I I like Ralph Wilson Stadium much better. Okay, I'm going to take it in a different direction. Okay. This is how we're going to wrap it up, I think. So, this is money out of your pocket. Fifteen twenty-five fifty on your over-under for the Bills wins. We'll start at $10. Or the $15 at 10 wins. Would you put fifteen twenty five fifty on ten wins? On on ten wins? Yep. Money out of your pocket. Well, we have another game, so that's another opportunity. I'm going to say fifty dollars. Okay. I got big I'm, expectations. I'm gonna bump it up to twelve wins. Twelve wins. Okay. I'm gonna say fifty dollars. Alright, the bills go seventeen and zero. For the first undefeated regular season at 17 games, how much money? 50? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> I I mean, I would like to say 50, but winning in the NFL is a hard thing to do, and I, I feel like a lot of people... Well, maybe I'm... It, it, There's it's, usually a hiccup along the way. Yeah, winning in the NFL is hard, man, and undefeated seasons those don't really happen and when i think of undefeated seasons i think about how the patriots lost to the giants in super bowl 42 and had a chance at the perfect season and that did not work out and that team was pretty stacked not saying the bills aren't stacked but i i can't put any money on that so i'm i'm gonna say zero because i don't think they're gonna go undefeated I'd put fifty bucks on seventeen no right now. There we go. That for for it never having been done in history, the odds on that have to be great. If, imagine if it actually happened too. Like, bro. I can't. Fifty times whatever that those betting odds are. Yeah. <laughs> you'd be set for life. We gotta wrap this up so I can put fifty bucks on that. Right. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up, actually, for the Six Degrees of the Buffalo Bills. Next week, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, our review of the front office and just reviews of the coaches as well. Go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, and review our podcast. It would be greatly appreciated. We're always looking for guests on the show, so reach out to us on our social media platforms if you're interested by searching The Wandering Buffalo Podcast. Justin, where can the people find you? can always find me at jgods22 reach out let me know if you want to be on the show if anybody wants to send over any mock drafts and get some thoughts on it um i really enjoy looking at the mock drafts and i like seeing what other people are doing with them to give me some different ideas of of where we should be looking in the draft so 
Let me know. All right, and you can always find me on most social media platforms by searching Two Changs. It's been a very fun and creative episode, Justin. I'm excited for next week's discussion. But as always, Justin, go Bills. Go Bills. Go Bills.